Hello, and welcome to Fireside Chat number... Number 26. We're into our second... Our second batch of 25. Yeah, so... We had our silver golden jubilee. jubilee. Exactly. <laughs> heading for the golden jubilee. Now, since last time, I have to say, we have had a complaint. A complaint? A complaint. Now, I don't want to publicise... The, the person, identity she, of the person. She, she or he. She or he. She or he. She or he asked to remain anonymous. But she made a very valid point. She did, yeah. Or he. Um, I think there's no ambiguity. And if you look at uh, the last fireside chat... Can we just chat, call her Mrs. Mrs. X? Mrs. X. Mrs. X. Yes. Okay. Miss, actually. Miss, is it? Or Miss, yeah. Miss X. Um, or no Mr. One, no, Miss actually. Yeah. And an unusual Christian name as well. Oh, right. Karina. Which I think is quite unusual. Yeah, strange. I mean, the surname Fenton is fairly straightforward. Yeah. But you, the Karina Fenton, you know, well, anyway. Anyway, this person... Who wishes to remain anonymous. Who wishes to remain anonymous. Uh, picked me up for something that I did on the last Fireside Chat. Shocking. I was talking about the dog arm puppet and talking about the microphone, which is a great idea. If you haven't seen it, do go and have a look at it. Uh, a sponge ball on the end of a little that tube. That was good, though. And a lot of people it, it commented... It was more your treatment of the defenceless It was puppet. my treatment of the puppet, because apparently afterwards I just dropped the dog over the side of the chair, um, which is unforgivable. However, I hope you're going to forgive me. But... Um, what I used to do when I was doing a lecture on puppetry was actually I would walk on dragging the puppet, I would hold it by one leg, dragging it upside down. And I was trying to make the point that if you don't believe in the puppet, then your audience aren't going to believe in it either. Uh, and, and Karina's proved your point, really, because... Well, I was hoist by my own petard. Yeah. Because I just dropped it over the side. So, who, sorry? Uh, the Mrs. Mr. Miss Miss X. Miss X. Yes. Miss X. Um, so there we are. I am humbly chastised and um, and quite right to. I would like to apologise to all of you, but especially to Karina for uh, an unforgiven or unforgivable. Uh, so Miss Fenton, we're really sorry. Yes. Okay. okay. So that protect apology, your identity. Yes, we will do everything to protect it. So what have we been up to today? Well, we've been filming. It's been my monthly visit. And uh, we've been filming uh, three. Three releases, I won't say they're exactly What new. I'm very excited about, I've got it here, can I, can I show this one? Yes, John is, very, John This is, is one excited. of the first things I ever bought from Practical Magic. Um, years and years and years ago, it was um, this model of the uh, the jumping stool, which It isn't I, really, it doesn't do anything, we've just been to Ikea. And, uh, <laughs> no, it, you know, it's one of those things, it, it's just a short gag in the show, although you can do it several times, but it, it has such an impact when the stool jumps up, and this one... Uh, I've had several over the years. It was always the best one I ever had. It, it jumped a good distance, and uh, I'll try and do it here without uh, sitting down. It's quite dangerous. There we are. So it, it jumps quite high in the air. And, uh, it does. It comes up to shoulder high. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's fantastic. Just, just run through how you actually use. Well, this. when I used to use this in my children's show, it was always. And it, I think I do this on my uh, my DVD, which is available again uh, now from all good retailers. And uh, I used to open the show by walking out laying this down in front of the children then I would put the the Axtell drawing board in its bag on top of there and that would be my performing surface and I would do a sponge ball routine on top of there and then uh, that would kind of draw the children in because it was more down on their level and then at the end of the routine all the balls would disappear I'd, I'd whip up the uh, the board I'd step on the stool the stool would jump up I'd grab the stool I'd throw them all in the case and say let's start the show and the, and the music would kick in and we start and or it would do nowadays you know? it's a great attention grabber isn't it uh, it is and it's great if you're busking and you want to finish your show and walk off you can actually have your, your suitcase in one hand <laughs> catch yeah. this under your arm yeah. and walk off uh, stay, uh, yeah, stage acts do that at the, end of the, at the end of the act it's fantastic there'll be those who look at it and say Fantastic, I can use that, I see it's worth. There'll be others who look at it and say it's a five second gag. Um, large lorry has just gone past outside. But <laughs> it's up to you as to whether you think. How is Large Lorry these days? <laughs> He's very well. <laughs> um, but it, it's up to you to, whether, to, 
to, to whether you think that that will fit into what you do. But I think the way it's one of those John things. It was it. certainly <laughs> worth me carrying it for years and years, and I should be having another one of those because um, you know I've, I've left them behind. I left one behind at Centre Parks. That's my that's my only problem with these. I'm, a, I'm because it looks like a piece of the furniture. Occasionally, somebody tidies them away. So if you get one, hang on to it, put it back <laughs> in the box, and make sure. Uh, that you don't leave it behind anywhere by accident because nearly every one, and I've been through several of these, uh, has been carelessly left behind at a show and when I've gone back I've not been able to find it. Centre Parks was the first one I lost, the, where I lost the uh, original of, the, of this. But fantastic you've got those back in stock again. I bought mine about 20 years ago I think. Well you might have wondered what I was just doing off camera at least I think. Well I was trying camera. to fill while you were doing it. So, yes. Uh, so nobody well, noticed. Well I, I thought they might not be interested in what you were saying so I thought I'd well, you were, create I thought a you diversion over here. Fumbling around over there um, at, at something. But this is another effect this is new and uh, this is called Rainbow Dies. Now I noticed it's a die in a box. Yes. It's, it, it's We've got a little box here. Um, we put out a, a trick called Rainbow Plume and the, the basic idea behind Rainbow Plume is you had a tube you pushed a white plume inside and um, it came out white again, which proved that the thing was actually empty. But then you said, okay, well, let's have some colours. And people suggested various colours. You say, wait a minute, wait a minute, I can't do all of those. You fed it through one more time and when it came out, it was multicoloured because it was showing everybody's colour. And this has now been applied, um, our trick has been applied to, to, a, dye. This, to, a, to, the, to a dye. So you've got the black and white dye, you've got a little box, and, well, I'll let you do the honours, oh, right. John. Is it, is it a, a, a... Oh, and the lid on there as well, so... Um, I really haven't had any time to practice this, so we'll see if it's, it's an easy thing. Uh, the way we did, we, we worked out a little routine that we thought we might be quite fun, where you get a change bag and you, put some, you, you take some coloured handkerchiefs out of the box, they go into a change bag, so it, it's a force. And the, child. the other thing is that it gives a reason because the handkerchiefs start in the box in the, in the empty yeah. box. So it gives a reason for the box. Yeah, and then of course the, the child picks the red one out of the box and you say, let's see what's happened. And I'll pass you the lid. Or oh, I think something's happened, let's have a look. And then when you tip out the die, look at that. It's turned into a completely red die. Fantastic. This is returned to the box. And the lid goes back on. And then... Uh, the handkerchiefs go back inside the box. Somebody else is going to pick one. The handkerchiefs into the bag. In the bag, sorry. The handkerchiefs disappear altogether. And then when we open this again, something else has happened. And look what's happened. The dye is now all the colours of the rainbow. So the hankies vanish, and the dye paint. It's like a magic painting effect. It's a great. It is. It's a nice. But it's a lovely. Um, it really is beautifully made. And it's it really nicely it made. I was just showing you the, the tolerances, when you put that in, it just glides very nicely inside. So that is called Rainbow Dice. Um, I don't think anybody else in this country is carrying it. So, um, but obviously we have a limited number of these and you can get them from us. So that is the second release that we have filmed today. Now we just had fun filming another uh, children's release, a, a classic I believe. Well, this is one that we put out 15 years ago, and I'll just give you a bit of background. It originally appeared in the world's only magical weekly, which was called Abra, Abracadabra to give it its full title, by an elderly gentleman called Fred Wiles, and it was originally called Larry and His Friends. And a good friend of ours, Jerry Luff, took the story, changed it a little bit, not very much, and added a few extra bits and pieces. And we put it out... Now, as I said, Fred Wiles was an elderly gentleman when I contacted him about getting the rights to make this. We sent him a copy and it was taken in to hospital where he was exactly one week before he died. And he was absolutely thrilled to have his uh, trick out on the market. I don't think he'd ever had. Just to say, when, when, I, when I, people talk to me about what they'd like to see brought back, this, this, the name of this trick comes up all the time and I didn't know what it was at first okay well it's although called, my wife actually owns one of these well it's called animals of meadow farm um, it's one of the ultimates in pack flat because you've got a folder with a story inside so no complicated script to learn it's all there not only that <laughs> you have six children up so it's it fills a stage, stage filler, yeah. and each of them is represented as an animal and I'll explain about that in a moment but the animals are mentioned in bold type here. 
So, as I say, you have six children to come up and you tell them that you're going to read a story and each of them is going to represent an animal. And one of them is an owl. One I, of them... I can't just see how nice these cards are. Well, these are... Because these are now... Pla I don't think the ones we've got are plastic like They were this. originally laminated, but now they're actually screened onto plastic. These are, these are really nice, to um, really hard wear. Children are going to be handling these so they're wiped clean. So one child is an owl, one is a dog, we've got a cow... Nice big bold pictures, um, visible in a very large hall. A donkey, um, a cat, and a pig. Now, one of the things that you'll notice immediately is all these animals make a noise. So, whenever you mention one of the animals, the child who's holding that one has to hold it high above their head. But, in order to get every single child involved, all the other children have to make the appropriate noise. And the story unfolds about the owl waking up all the animals because he's worried. And he's worried because the rabbit is missing. And you look around and say, well, come on, who's got the rabbit? And the children say, you know, there isn't one. You say, well, it's very odd because it definitely says somewhere here. <laughs> and as you're talking, it's there. a rabbit peeps out. It's you, see, inside. you saw what? You saw a rabbit. It was I don't inside. Think that very likely. It's at the bottom now. And now the rabbit peeps out of the bottom. So when you have a look at the bottom of the book, the rabbit now pops out of the top. And, and the children well, respond accordingly. And the children respond. So, of course, you never see uh, it. This is the thing you've changed, isn't it? Because I, I don't, don't remember the we rabbit. We used to have a pop-up rabbit in the centre that folded down. Like, and like I never quite but... liked the, um, the opening of it. This one, you've got three little rabbit heads that pop up. That's much nicer places. because you've got three, the, the three different... Um, like that but of course you never see it and you say well I don't know it, the, it says there's a rabbit here but I can't find it at all and just at that moment the animals all hear a noise they hide and what is it they all sat there waiting and what it was was the farmer had found the rabbit and brought it back so that the animals were all together again safe and sound and then for a great finale particularly if you're working on a stage you say to the children just turn over your cards and when they do, it, it will actually... <laughs> it will spell out the end. It will spell the end. But a better idea than that is to deliberately have the children in all the wrong order. So you say, I've got a very important message for you all. And the message is... <laughs> no, you come and stand here. You come and stand there. So you move the children around. And then you've got that finale, the end. Now, we did attempt to film this today. Um, at a range of six feet. With only two children... And I'm, I'm, you know, I'm quite proud of how, thought, how this came out. <laughs> I thought you were a star. Uh, so with only two, we, we filmed the entire routine with no audience. Uh, <laughs> two, children two children in our rather snug studio. And just to whet your appetite, John appears in drag. Uh, yeah, so tune in for that one. <laughs> <laughs> so I've never felt so comfortable, to be honest. Um, there we are. That <laughs> is a, an old classic which we brought out again. So, yeah, not a lot of magic there, but it's a great... It's one of those brilliant things that will be an interlude. Uh, 10 lots to 15 shouting. minutes, and that is all you've got to carry in your... Case. I could see me doing that at something like one of my Cabri World shows, and that being nearly nearly the whole show once the, once the warm-up has been done. Yeah. Um, it's one of those great things that you can carry around with you, and if you need to fill 15 minutes... It'd be a great thing. I mean, I, I've only just started doing full parties, and I could see do, you doing that as... Uh, instead of a game, because if you've got all this the fun and action of, of the well, we had it out before. Some people used it as a game, um, and it works perfectly well for that. Yeah. But whatever, whatever way you use it, there's a great piece of entertainment. Really, good you could fun. even do the thing where you've got them running around the when, when it's their their animal, they could lift it up and run around the table, or yeah. run around the, the well. You could the, easily the turn them into two teams as well. Yeah. The first three and the, against the second three. So a lot of potential there, and it's a, a classic returning. It is. So, so there we are. That short and sweet. Um, oh, so but uh, let's not forget we just we just filmed a little um, outside in the garden. We maybe had to show a few clips from that. Right. Jeremy did his, his ALS ice bucket challenge. Unexpectedly, it yeah. has to be said. <laughs> Completely so, unexpectedly. Uh, yeah. Um, so a fun day for you. Yeah, I enjoyed that. That was a lot of fun. Mm. So uh, my response is slightly more muted. <laughs> so there we are. An apology to um, Miss X. Miss X. And um, 
three new items and apparently some clips from uh, me getting an absolute soaking. So we'll we'll we'll, 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 we'll play, we'll play that, out with you? those. Thanks thanks for watching everybody. All right. And join us next time for Fireside Chat number twenty seven. See you soon. If someone was going to actually do it, right? Look at that. All right. I am now completely. Actually, I'm, I'm, before I get the bucket, <laughs> can I just show you something in there? There's a, look, there's a, there's a routine in there that yeah, most people I'd... don't know about. Look, I'm going to show you. Quick, do it now. Do it now. Do it now. No, <laughs> no. I need to go and get dry, but as I'm supposed to be a magician, and I nominate David Kay, Yozo Bozo, and Sam Meekin. <laughs>